Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Good Monday evening to you all. Hope you guys are doing well out there. Appreciate y'all tuning in this evening. Hope you guys had an awesome Monday. I know I had a pretty good day myself. Certainly one of the better Mondays in some time for me personally. So hope it was the same way for you folks. But, um, you know, we're not going to have a, you a super long video this evening by any means. Uh, we're going to give you some pretty cut and dry information on the severe weather risk coming up over the next few days. Really, Starting tomorrow all the way through the rest of the work week through Friday, we're going to have a risk for severe storms. So we're going to talk about this for you. Uh, tomorrow isn't going to be a big day, but as we start to get into Wednesday through Friday, we could have a more, I wouldn't even use the word significant, but a higher chance of severe weather, higher confidence on maybe some significant severe weather, but uh, certainly not a widespread outbreak by any means. As of right now, that could change. So. Uh, with that being said, if you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. Thank you all uh, for the support, the continued support. And if you guys got anything that I can pray about or pray over, as always, please put those in the comments below. It gives me an opportunity to pray over it, and it gives others an opportunity to do so too. So let's take out Water Vapor Loop. If I sneeze in the video, I do apologize. I've been sneezing a good bit today. And uh, when I sneeze, uh, it is very loud. You know, some people have those very loud sneezes and some people like to hold it in where it feels like their chest is going to explode, which I've always heard that's not good at all. And I used to do that when I was younger, but I quit doing it because um, uh, my uncle once told me that it would make your chest explode. So I've been paranoid ever since. Um, but uh, anyways, we still are dealing with this pesky low. Um, you know, we've we've had snow flying around as far south as Ohio, Indiana throughout the afternoon. Let me know what you're seeing in portions of uh, Pennsylvania and uh, western New York State as some rain showers are probably switching to some snow showers out here. See this little swirl? This is our upper trough that's going to continue to dig into the west. And we're just going to have pieces of energy that are going to ride this upper trough. <clears throat> and at the surface, we're going to have a a low pressure, deepening low pressure that's going to spawn and pull up low level moisture and uh, definitely create forcing for some severe thunderstorms. And, um, you know, also at the surface, we'll have a trailing cold front that will uh, pretty much end the warm temperatures that we're expecting across a lot of the central and eastern U.S. coming up over the next few days. And we'll go back to a cooler pattern, which I think will stay for um, a substantial amount of time for a lot of people. So. That's kind of what's going on as far as water vapor loop. We'll start it off by tomorrow. There's just a marginal risk of severe weather. I mean, there's a marginal. You got a level one out of five for marginal uh, for severe storms, even into Wyoming. This stretches from Wyoming all the way to uh, western Iowa, all the way down what we call a dry line, which is a separation between very moist air and bone dry desert like air. And we will have this. So. I can almost tell you, not with 100% confidence, but there's a good high chance that you could be under a moderate risk of severe storms tomorrow, but you will just see uh, some uh, partly cloudy skies. And that's just how it is when you have a capped environment, which if you don't know what that means, when you have a cap in the atmosphere, atmosphere it basically means you have an area of dry, stable, warm air, which uh, prevents cumulus clouds from building and updrafts from exploding in the atmosphere and taking advantage of all the cape and fuel in the atmosphere that will be here tomorrow. But luckily we have that cap in the atmosphere that's going to prevent. And it's not necessarily luckily because a lot of people in these regions need rain, especially in the western sections of the plain states, uh, which always seems to get kind of ripped off when it comes to rain this time of the year. But we got this tornado threat. You know, it's never non-existent. Uh, Florida will tell you that over the last several days. Uh, where uh, you guys have continued to get tornado warnings over the last few days. You had one again this morning. You got that 5% risk of damage of a winds pushing 50 knots or higher. I got to stop saying damaging winds. But you got uh, that 5% uh, chance of winds pushing 50 knots or higher, 55 to 60 miles per hour, and then a 5% chance of hail pushing one inch or diameter or larger. So not a big deal tomorrow, but we'll talk about what could happen a more broader look here, and we'll start off around 1 p.m. tomorrow afternoon, back this up one hour, and we'll get this in range. By no means is this going to be widespread storms. I mean, we're at 5 p.m., still nothing is going on, but around 7-ish could have a storm pop up in northern Kansas. Low-level jet is starting to increase around this time, so these storms might be rotating, but that doesn't mean it's going to latch to the surface. It doesn't mean you're going to get a tornado on the ground, and here it is. You got one storm popping up along the Kansas-Nebraska border. We'll go on and zoom in on this and fast forward. One little lone storm right here in these little towns, communities, 
right here in the bordering northern counties of uh, Kansas and southern counties of Nebraska. This could potentially be just a, a storm right out in the open. Um, it could be a powerful storm. It might be a severe storm. But, you know, this one particular model run of the late long-range HRRR model just shows one lone storm. And this eventually could, you know, try to make it up into, uh, you know, southeast Nebraska and then eventually maybe into uh, western Iowa and, you know, around midnight or just after. And it could become more widespread as uh, the surface low is nearby. So certainly in the wee hours of the morning, uh, tomorrow night to Wednesday morning, uh, more widespread rains as possible for areas of Iowa. But, you know, you know, you, you switch it and you go all the way to Wyoming. Uh, what could it potentially look like for you guys under a marginal risk? Um, definitely need to show you guys some love out here. And, I mean, we'll see what happens. We get into this afternoon. you got convective snow showers in the higher elevations right into here. Um, do any storms get going? It's, it's a possibility. Um, but there's definitely a chance for maybe a convective snow shower, lightning and thunder with a little bit of... Um, just caping the atmosphere, but with enough cold air nearby, you might have a, a thunder snow shower possible here in central to eastern Wyoming. We'll see what happens. Maybe some grapple that could fall in and around the Casper area. We'll certainly see what happens with that. Um, the chances begin to increase as we get into Wednesday. This is for Wednesday. you got a slight risk, and this goes all the way from Wichita all the way up to Des Moines. O includes Omaha, Lincoln, almost down to Kansas City, and a huge marginal risk, which goes from the hills of uh, southern and southwest Texas all the way up into the southern sections of Wisconsin and Minnesota. And you also have a hatch risk, so you have a 15% chance of sick, significant severe weather, which I can almost guarantee you this is probably going to be large hail. And I'm going to go and tell you right at the dot that almost every day that we have severe weather this week, there's going to be a chance for large hail. Um, and so we got to watch for this. And we're only in range of the NAM right now of this. But uh, I could tell you there's going to be some damaging winds also and some hail. Not, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they put a 2% risk of a tornado, but, you know, definitely not a 5% risk. But we'll start this off Wednesday around 4 p.m. Central Time out here. And uh, this is just tropical tidbits. And here it goes. It shows around heck this is around 9 p.m right along this low pressure deepening in kansas potentially um an area of showers and storms that get going uh, probably tomorrow probably wednesday evening i'm sorry lasting through wednesday night um you know just north of kansas city you got to watch all the way into iowa all these storms could produce some very strong winds and some uh a large hail. And what I know this is kind of everywhere, but you know, at the same time, we're, we're not in good range of some of these short range models, but I can tell you, expect a stormy night from Northern to Northeast, uh, Kansas through Southeast Nebraska, all the way through Wyoming. I'm sorry, all the way through Iowa. You know, I like to mix my States up sometimes just to keep you guys, uh, on your toes, but uh, definitely some strong to severe storms are almost likely in this region. It's just what kind of storm mode are we going to have? It looks quite, it looks quite stormy. You know, this goes all the way out to about 1 a.m. Um, all the 1 a.m. like Thursday morning, 1 a.m. Uh, shows a lot of strong storm action into the nighttime hours. You know, what does it look like down here in the South Central U.S. and uh, you know, you got a marginal risk down here, but you might not even get one storm that fires up. You still got a capped environment, an elevated mixed layer, just dry air, dry, dusty air in the upper levels of the atmosphere. So you might not get any storm development late Wednesday into Wednesday night. But you still keep the marginal risk down there because the atmosphere is primed for explosive storms. There's fuel in the atmosphere. It just has to be tapped into, right? So we got to watch for that. But we move into Thursday. 15% risk of severe weather. This goes from Dallas, Fort Worth, through Little Rock, all the way up into portions of the Boot Hill, Missouri, including Poplar Bluff. Not quite in the Springfield. This is basically a slight risk, level two out of five for day four. I think that if there's going to be any day that poses any kind of tornado threat, it'll be this day, and I'll talk to you about why. And we're going to talk about day four and day five also kind of at the same time. And speaking of day five, this is the threat for our Friday into Friday night. 15% uh, risk of severe weather, just a little bit further south, but actually overlapping some of the same areas for Thursday. 
But, you know, you're starting to get more into Mississippi, northern Louisiana, basically the same areas that's just been under the gun over the last several weeks. With both threats, the primary threat, two threats are going to be damaging winds and large hail. And we'll talk about why here. So let's look at the ingredients on the on pivotal weather here, and we'll start it off um, and really focus in this area right here. We'll start off Thursday morning. First thing you'll see is this is dew points, by the way. Uh, measures the moisture in the atmosphere. We know dew points, once you start to get to the 60s, so it's a supportive thermodynamic for severe weather. So a huge plume of very moist air. And in response to these higher dew points, you're always going to have higher cape levels. So you move it all the way. Uh, going to have to go up here and click my icon. Pivotal weather can be uh, kind of irritating to use sometimes, but we'll keep this rolling. I love it, though. It's a, it's a great very cheap uh, site for severe weather. The soundings are amazing. Uh, but you go into Thursday about early afternoon, you got higher moisture built into the area. Dew points well into the low 70s here in southern and southeast Texas. But bang, you'll stop it right here Thursday afternoon. Dew points surging into the 60s all the way into southern Missouri. And uh, just an area of very moist air. Even You can't ignore eastern Oklahoma too. And definitely northeast Texas certainly will have dew points well into the 60s, upper 60s, maybe some 70s. And we keep this into the overnight hours, um, late Thursday night. And then we get all the way into Friday morning. Okay, you still got a ton of moisture. This isn't going anywhere. And uh, this trailing cold front at the surface will begin to bring more stable air into Arkansas. But Friday afternoon, you still got dew points well into the 60s still a very moist atmosphere in this region so the atmosphere is still prime for severe weather down here just more of a uh, you know probably a large hail threat and with any kind of storms that can rotate at all a damaging wind threat in this region so in response to all these higher dew points you get an immediate response from more fuel in the atmosphere which we call cape so um, you know, you look all, we just go all the way to Thursday afternoon. Well, we all wait, we'll look at about 1 p.m. Thursday. Look at all this fuel in the atmosphere. Cape, Cape uh, values reaching 25 to 3,000 joules per kilogram. A lot of ingredients in the atmosphere. But that doesn't mean you're going to get storms. You got to have some forcing in the atmosphere. You got to get rid of that cap, and you're going to have a big cap down here. So you click a sounding down here, and uh, you see this uh, area where the temperatures actually rise on this. So it's 82 degrees at the surface, right? Temperatures drop abruptly, and then they kind of rise somewhat, several thousand feet up in the air. So, um, you know, you can have all this moist air, 71 degree dew point, 82 degree surface temperature, but um, you, you just can't get any explosive thunderstorms. There's not, not really any forcing in the atmosphere uh, to really fire these storms up. But you keep going, and uh, you get all the way into Friday afternoon, and you got Cape values reaching well over 1,000 to 1,500 joules per kilogram here, especially in western Arkansas. A lot of fuel to the atmosphere in northeast um, northeast Texas and also into southeast and eastern sections of Oklahoma. So there's definitely going to be some fuel to the atmosphere for, for this for sure. But as we keep moving, um, we get into um friday morning oh, man look at this this is friday morning you got cape levels well over a thousand joules per three thousand joules per kil kilogram in this region um but man wow that's wild over four thousand joules per kilogram cape down here in southern uh southern sections of uh texas but that doesn't mean anything if you can't light a match to the fuel but uh you know it, I, I expect the cape <clears throat> excuse me the cape levels to increase for louisiana in Mississippi, definitely in this region. But as of right now, in response to these big time moist levels, these dew points, you're not seeing much of a response to Cape. That's why severe weather is um, much more complex, in my opinion, to talk about and to dissect than the tropics and the um, winter weather. Here we go. Sneeze. Wait. <laughs> All right. Live on camera. There y'all go. All right. Now my eyes are probably going to start water, uh, watering. I, I, I apologize, guys. But you look at the low-level jet. This is a kinematic player in the atmosphere. This is the big thing you look at for any kind of tornado potential. So you ask, okay, you got the Cape in place from Texas all the way through Arkansas and southern Missouri for um, for Thursday. But check it out. You got you know a 30, 40-knot low-level jet in areas, but it's fleeting. It's heading out. 
So right when the atmosphere gets prime, all the ingredients become uh, begin to kind of come together. You got a fleeting low-level jet. So the kinematic the kinematic atmosphere is really fleeing the area. But this is why they had the 15% risk in this area because this is basically the area where you have your best thermodynamics, uh, your surface temperatures, your low-level lap, your lapse rates, which we don't talk about enough. I feel like we need to talk more on that and explain that a little bit more. Basically, lapse rates is what we talk about is how fast does the temperatures drop um, aloft. Basically, um, if you were to go right where you're standing, 10,000 feet up, how fast is the temperature drop? If they drop very quickly, that means you have impressive lapse rates, which um, uh, feeds those updrafts, those thunderstorm development. We'll dive a little bit deeper into that. Hopefully, we can talk a little bit more into some of these scientific terms as we get a little bit deeper in the summer where, you know, there's just not a whole lot to talk about. We can do some maybe some learning, um, learning weather videos, things like that. But, you know, the kinematic atmosphere is kind of fleeting. Um, but it's still there somewhat. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if we get a 2% or 5% risk of a tornado also in this area. Not much kinematic atmosphere. You got you still got a 30, 40 knot low level jet in areas, but certainly not too crazy kinematic wise out here. And then we get into Friday, and I'm not really expecting much of a tornado threat at all for Friday, if any. Uh, you just, the only the only low level jet action that you're seeing is basically storms that kind of create their own winds aloft. But in general, Friday, I just expect um, just to be kind of a, a hail threat and a damaging wind threat. So hopefully that helps. Uh, we'll continue to get you updated information, but I really don't see any of these days being super significant, uh, but that could change, especially the last two days of the work week. God bless all y'all. Have a great day and I'll talk to you in the morning.